views and opinions expressed in this program are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect the views of BronxNet or the program underwriters. And good morning, everybody, and welcome to Open, the one and only show that opens up the Bronx and the world to you. I'm your host, Dr. Bob Lee, and we've got a great show lined up for you today, so make sure you kick off your shoes and relax your feet and enjoy it with us, okay? We had a great show on WBLS last night, and now we're here. Started from the bottom, now we're here. Hey, coming up on today's show, Denny Moe's Cutting for Cure is back, and we'll take a look at this event connecting health and hair. Plus, the International Sports and Music Project is holding a fundraiser for Rwanda. And we'll sit down with this organization that works to enable youth around the world. After that, we'll be joined by uh, an activist and app creator and learn about her work in the community to spread education. And then later on, prepare to get moving and get motivated with trainee, trainer Tracy Nottis here. He has all the tools necessary to work you out and get you on the go. We'll talk about that. So stay tuned. All some more is headed your way because we are now definitely open. <laughs> Hello everybody, I'm your host, Dr. Bob Lee from 107.5 WBLS, your number one source for R&B. You're watching Channel 67's Open. You may get it many different ways, through the internet and all that stuff. It's the only live interactive program that brings the Bronx and New York City straight to your TV set. Now we want to encourage you to stay connected to us. You can tweet us at BronxNet TV and follow us on Facebook at Open BronxNet Television. Leading off the show, it is with great sadness that I share that my friend, my mentor, and radio legend, worked with for so many years, Vaughn Harper from The Quiet Storm, has passed away. We started The Quiet Storm here in New York City, and we spent many wonderful years together working out in the community. Let's take a look at some great memories. <laughs> person I grew up with in radio. Um, we did a lot of things together in the past. Uh, he did The Quiet Storm during the week. I did something called the weekend edition of The Quiet Storm. Uh, back in the day, we had a whole lot of fun with this. And, and Vaughn taught me a lot also. Uh, uh, at, when I was an intern, Vaughn was working middays. Uh, and I know he was on 12 o'clock. Uh, and I was in the music library. We arranged that whole music library back then. Colleges that you should dress right. You know, we learned a lot. Uh, and Vaughn, you know, was a good guy. You know, he's a legend. Oh yes. Started the Quiet Storm here in New York City. And remember, we remember a great guy, Vaughn Harper. Now, see, I don't have a tie on. He prepared. He prepared me for open because when I was an intern, coming out of college, New York Institute of Technology. Uh, I was working in the music library, relabeling all the records and everything. We were playing real records at the time, and he used to do a lunchtime mix. So I used to help gather some of his records. And, you know, they tell you when you're in college, when you go to the workplace, you know, wear a suit and tie or a jacket and tie. So I was trying to be as proper as possible. Vaughn leaned into the music library. He said, hey, man, why don't you loosen your tie? <laughs> Relax a little bit. Because <laughs> I wanted to, you know, show that, it, you know, I was a part of what, what was going on and I dressed the part. He said, nah, 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 nah. You're in the professional world now. Relax, take off your tie. And we became good friends. I knew I was, uh, I was stamped by Von Hopper. I felt comfortable and we had a wonderful working relationship over the years. Um, I was a part of the Quiet Storm team from, uh, if I mention this, 86 to 94. Some of you are saying, wow, I was just born. From 86 to 94, I was a part of the WBLS Quiet Storm team. I did the weekend edition of the Quiet Storm, and Vaughn did it during the week. And we had a team, Jerry Bledsoe, Vaughn Harper, Champagne, myself, even Shayla became a part of that. And we had Quiet Storm boat rides and appearances, and we had all the things associated with it to make it all happen. So we're going to miss this great person, this legend, Vaughn Harper of the Quiet Storm, WBLS. 
We'll take a quick break right here, but stay tuned. We'll be right back with more Open next. I'm only 17, but I know about investing. Believe in something, buy shares in it, watch it grow. So what if you could invest in the future? The future of kids, like a stock. Not the kind of stock that's about making money, but a stock for social change. A whole new kind of investment called Better Futures. When you invest, it helps kids go to college. I could be one of the first college graduates from my family. The first philanthropist from my neighborhood. And if I'm the first, then maybe there's a second and a third. Believe in us. Invest in us. Watch us grow. My name is Sydney, and I'm your dividend. Me and my boy Matt had it good. He had catnip that was off the hook. But one day, he brings a girl home, and she's allergic to cats. Every sneeze was a nail in my coffin. Now I'm in a shelter. It's decent, but they don't even have Wi-Fi. Welcome back, everybody. I'm your host, the Dr. Bob Lee. Hey, you know, from July the 15th through the 17th, Denny Moe's Superstar Barbershop, they're going to be holding their annual Cutting for a Cure. Joining us with me, we have, uh, we're going to preview the whole thing. We'll let you know about everything that's happening. We have the owner. Go back. We have the owner. The owner is in the house, Denny Moe, and founder of the Hugs Movement, Chairman Marsha R. Bonner. We welcome you guys to the show. Thank you for having <laughs> us. <laughs> you took that Motown step back? <laughs> I know that move. You know that move? <laughs> <laughs> I know you do. So what's happening? You're doing some wonderful things. You were here before. Yes, we were. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You're doing some wonderful things in the community. You continue to do that. Um, share a little bit about uh, Cutting for a Cure. Well, you know, Cutting for a Cure is a nonprofit organization, um, 501c3. And every two years, we host a 48-hour health fair and hair cutting marathon. Yeah. And every year, we have an opportunity to do more for the community. In 2014, we had over 3,000 people come out, Whoa. Um, Dr. Bob, and we screened over 1,000. And we gave away literally 8,000 pieces of literature. So that's the health piece of it. Mm -hmm. We offer a summer stage, a poetry show, a barber battle, and other entertainment. A barber battle. A barber battle. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, we, I'm we're hoping to get some we, lines you know, cut uh, <laughs> <laughs> So, so we're very, we're very happy to bring that intersection together because we found, um, unfortunately, that people will not come out if we just had a health fair. Mm -hmm. Haven't figured that out for our communities yet. Um, and maybe that's not for us to figure yeah. out. What we do know is that when, when we provide a little entertainment, um, they True. will come out, and then we'll have the um, health care providers there to do as, as much uh -huh. testing as we possibly can. What, what made you guys want to start this? Well, um, it started in um, 2008. You know, um, I was diagnosed myself with um, type 2 diabetes. Yeah. And you know, you that's the problem that Bon Harper had. But he had right. type mm -hmm. one and just yeah. wreaked havoc. Wow. Yeah, he went through a lot. He yep. went through a lot, definitely. And the thing is, you know, like like Marshall was saying, a lot of us, you know, men, black men, don't go to the doctor. Yeah. You know, we're we're quick to drive someone mm -hmm. else to the doctor, but for us, we're all right. You know. Yeah. And that was my attitude. You know. And then the symptoms told me you're not all right. You know. And we, I, I, I don't want the people who have to wait till the symptoms tell them they're not all right. Yeah. You and know, you so try so hard to get the body to do what it did before right. and it's, it's going <laughs> right. this way and you're trying exactly. to pull it and you're in denial and now this right. is not happening but then you got to sit down and say hey come to the realization the realization that you know there's something going on and I need to get it corrected mm -hmm. exactly mm -hmm. and that's when you know we put together the cutting for a cure and um, ever since then um, it's, mm -hmm. it's been growing and growing and the the people come to the barbershop and they know that this is what we do now you know so they come to the barbershop yeah. and say hey I'm not feeling so good. Can you give me a blood pressure? Can you check my blood pressure? Because we check blood pressure in the barbershop on a regular. Yeah. You know, so this is just an extension of what we do on a regular basis. Yeah, yeah. yeah so you guys can wear the doctor's robes and everything. <laughs> 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 we haven't gotten that far yet, but you never know with Denny Moe here. <laughs> yeah, so you yeah. never know with Denny Moe. Yeah. Wow, but we're, we're, very, we're very excited about this. You know, our, our summer stage this year, 
um, has the legendary um, Melba Moore, oh, um, yeah. and many of our local artists as well. Um, mm -hmm. um, Farrah Boulay, Loaded Lux, Rain to Ray, Jessica Betts, mm -hmm. and these and all these folks. And it, it's important to say this: all these folks are are supporting us to support the community, mm -hmm. and they're not asking that's for important. a dime to do so. Yes, um, they're volunteering their time and their artistry to what it is that he does in mm -hmm. his artistry yeah. and what it is that I do in just supporting people in general. Yeah. And if you have these long lines, say what time are you, are you starting? The, the actual um, marathon will start at 10 o'clock. We have an opening ceremony before that at 9 o'clock, but the actual Oh, cutting. this is the, the line for the marathon, not the line up to get a haircut. Oh, he wants the haircut. <laughs> oh, we, no, I'm just saying, if you got long lines, Oh, well, you know. And the haircut, you're going to be open all night. Well, you, you, you call it blind. We can do well, a marathon you know, haircut. No, we, thing. That's what that's it what is. It, it's yeah. a 48 we'll be there hour for 48 hours. Right. 48 so, hours straight. So if they want to come at 2 o'clock in the morning, they're welcome to come. As long as they have a, a, a ticket um, for the event, um, we will be happy. Not, not me, per se. Let me roll out of my bed at <laughs> 2 o'clock in the morning. That's right. That's right. Brush my teeth, <laughs> roll on down there, and then sit in my chair. <laughs> but, <laughs> and you'll take good care of me, right? And, we're happy, care and we're happy to do it. my head just... Just get there before the 35th hour. Falls over like that. You're going to mess me up. Just get there before the 35th hour. You're all right. There you go. We're good. Yeah. We're good. We, so, we you know, enjoy this. We have um, 12 amazing barbers coming from all mm -hmm. over the world mm -hmm. to cut That's hair. Great. They Just like she said about the, the uh, artists, we have the barbers coming in on their own dime, on their own time, and they're donating to the Cutting for a Cure because of the simple fact that they want, I call them the barbers with the caring clippers. Beautiful. Superstar yeah. barbers. That's right. Superstar barbers. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And we've got superstar sponsors. We've got superstar. Who are some of the sponsors? Oh my gosh. Um, we've got um, ABC News, which is um, our primary media sponsor. We have Amy Roofs, um, Fairways. We mm -hmm. have all, you know, just. just yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. I, I think we have, sorry. We have um, 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 Norwood Pharmacy, um, Cherie Restaurant. Mm -hmm. You know, what, what's interesting about our sponsors is that many of them are, com are community. And they said, we like what you guys are doing and we want to be a part of it. Um, we want to show the community that we also care about them. And the yeah. platform that you've given us to do that um, is, 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 is exciting. Um, it's embracing, it's encouraging, it's, it's inspiring and it's motivating. Yeah. Um, so we're, we're happy to have as many sponsors as we do, um, along with the artists and, and so along with the people. So if somebody wants to become a sponsor, what do they have to do? Um, basically, they can just contact us like Cutting for a Cure. Um, our publicist is Jennifer Mack, mm -hmm. and she's happy to talk to them about sponsorship package. Also, individuals can donate um, through www, um, GoFundMe backslash cutting oh, for the letter the number for a cure yeah. and they can and they can donate and and trust and believe Dennis and I start with zero dollars Dr. Bob mm -hmm. and we are happy to do this um, as it has grown to get ten dollars here five dollars here every little bit helps because it takes a village well you mm -hmm. are a conduit from the Lord and God <laughs> is gonna bless you well you're blessed already and yes, you're activating your blessings thank you and people are being blessed as a in return for, for the wonderful things that you guys are mm -hmm. doing in our community. Now, when people come down, what can they expect? How's it gonna look to us? Give, paint a picture for paint us. Picture? We have about nine, seven to nine screening mobiles. They can come in and get screened for various diseases, prostate, colon cancer, breast cancer, diabetes, cholesterol, the whole nine. Um, there'll be entertainment. Didn't think a barbershop can do that, huh? <laughs> <How> about that. <laughs> <laughs> we have entertainment all the way around the clock, yeah. wellness seminars, and um, like she said, we have some amazing performers. And at night, we have a good neighbor policy, so we have to bring it down a little bit. Yeah, so we have a, a midnight spoken word, and um, Saturday night, we'll have a midnight comedy yeah. with Smokey Suarez. They're going to be whispering at night? No, they're not going to be oh, whispering. They're going to be whispering. <laughs> they're going to be whispering. You know, and, and, and the other thing, um, we, we mm. will be covering the street, mm. okay? So we have um, almost 40 healthcare providers tabling yeah. um, on Friday and almost a duplicative number on Saturday. So oh, the oh. whole street is going to be filled um, with healthcare providers. Sure. And we also have something that's very interesting as well. We have a dental van and oh, um, yeah. provided to us by Colgate. Um, and we're looking for the children to come and get their teeth checked. Yeah. And along with all of this information that they're going to be getting, they're going to be getting follow-up resource um, mm. information as well. So it's not enough to say, mm. oh, uh, Marsha, you have high blood pressure. 
and then just let me walk away from the table. My next question is, well, what do I do about it? And the health care providers will be able to provide you with answers Excellent. for that. Excellent. And that's yeah. what we need, answers. Yeah, and I'm reminded of uh, that Colgate event the first time I <laughs> made an appearance in front of it. I was with the New York giant Tiki Barber. Oh, wow. And, and we did the whole big thing. Yeah, it was a big health fair like that, right? too. But I remember when you mentioned Colgate that in that vehicle, mm -hmm. um, we were in front of that vehicle doing that. I think it's a wonderful thing. And it's right Thank uptown, you. Frederick Douglass Boulevard. That's right. Which are two or 2496 Frederick Douglass Boulevard, 133rd Street and 8th Avenue. That is correct. Yes, yes. All right. So we look forward to it. And when is it happening? July 15th to the 17th. Mm -hmm. All day and all night. 10 o'clock start. 48 time. hours. 48, 48 hours. hours. Hair cutting <laughs> marathon plus. <laughs> start at 10 o'clock on Friday and 10 o'clock on uh -huh. Sunday. Beautiful. Now, you have something with HUGS, partnership with HUGS. What is that about? Yeah, HUGS Movement Campaign. Mm -hmm. um, um, I'm an empowerment speaker, mm -hmm. and I'm also the founder of the HUGS Movement Campaign. And basically, it's an on-light advocacy um, initiative. Um, HUG stands for helping us grow spiritually. Oh, okay. And what I do is encourage people to think and live and embrace a HUGS mindset. Oh, Encourage, okay. yes. inspire, and uplift others through our words, actions, and deeds. Said you, I saw something on the news. It was a while ago. No, that was that was you. No, but people were going up and they were hugging people out of the blue. Was, is that? No, I was. I was actually in another that's, program called that's another program. What What Would You Do? Yeah. Um, and, and it was a barbershop scenario in Denny Moe's barbershop, uh -huh. and a uh, b black female barber was being discriminatory toward a white woman, and I offered her a hug, and I used the term hugs, helping us grow spiritually. Um, that video has over 80 million views right now, and um, I'm very proud yeah. of it and proud of the impact that it has had on the community. Because it was a major paradigm shift. You know, they think you're going to come at them one way, and you come up with love, and mm -hmm. love conquers all. Love, you, you better believe it. You know? I, 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 <laughs> love conquers you better all. Believe Give me it. a hug. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be right there. You're lucky I'm fucking <laughs> down over here. <laughs> Thank you guys so much. So wonderful. Oh, Thank give, you. Give us the address, the email, and all that stuff where we can reach you for more information. Okay. Um, Cutting for a Cure has a mm -hmm. website, cuttingforacure.com, www. Um, again, I'll mention GoFundMe.com uh -huh. um, slash Cutting for, the number four, a cure. And um, any other information, you can contact the barbershop directly mm -hmm. at what number? At 212-690-0015. Danny and Marsha. Congratulations. Thank you I'm so gonna much. Say congratulations before it, ever, before it ever happens. Take pictures, plenty of pictures, video. Oh, absolutely. Get a videographer, all those hey people. Hey, man, out you there. need to come out, man. I'm, you know, I'm trying let to. Let me have check out the date. I'll probably yeah, come man. on by. That would be great. Cool. That would right. be awesome. And, and stick around. FM is going to say hello to you right after this. <laughs> all right. Right. Give them a big hand, everybody. <laughs> Doing a wonderful thing in our community. Hold tight for a second. got to take a quick break, but uh, when we return, we'll take a look at a fundraiser working to enable youth globally. Stay tuned. We'll be right back with more. Every Monday night at 9, we talk to the borough's movers and shakers about the latest in Bronx politics, education, health care, arts and culture, and literally any and everything that's important to the people of the Bronx. There's a reason why Bronxites have been turning to Bronx Talk for more than 20 years. Because Bronx Talk is about you and me, the people of the Bronx. So we'll see you Monday night at 9. Wow, these are really good. You act surprised. Practice makes perfect. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of teens in foster care who don't need perfection. They need you. There's a shelter pet who wants to meet you. Meet one today. Visit the shelterpetproject.org. Adopt. It's me, Artie. Come see what I collected from the Creative Galaxy in my idea box. Transform your world. Will you help me make art? Each one of our journeys keeps us Before you throw it away. Hey, I have an idea. Think outside. 
the box. Give your cardboard box another life. Recycle. And welcome back, everybody. I'm your host, Dr. Bob Lee from BALS. Hey, on July the 23rd, the International Sports and Music Project will hold a fundraiser for Rwanda right here in New York City. Joining us to share what we can expect, we have founder and executive director Jason Steinberg. We welcome you to the show. Thank you so much. So happy to be here. You're no stranger. You've been around doing this for a while. How long? Uh, so, been fundraising for sports and music uh, resources for now, coming on two years, um, yeah. but the actual non-for-profit organization started only earlier this year. All right. So, yes, you've been doing it for a while. <laughs> yeah, a little while, a little yeah. while. It gets easier and easier, I guess, you know. Yeah, slowly but surely. You hesitated. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us some of the things that you're working on. Yeah, sure. So, we're called the International Sports and Music Project, uh -huh. and we find kids around the world that need sports or music resources uh, and we get them those resources anything from sneakers to instruments to anything like that and we're founded on a very strong belief that mm -hmm. sports and music can positively impact a, a child's life and a human's life and sure that's the kind of work we're trying to do and, and what communities are you working in right now so we started actually when i was living abroad and teaching um, and coaching basketball in a little country called the federated states of micronesia um, Didn't I hear you say that once before? <laughs> you may Somewhere. have. You may have. And so the Federated States, States of Micronesia. That's right, in the yeah. North Pacific. Uh -huh. um, working with a high school called Madelineem High School. And uh, yeah, it all started very organically. Um, you know, I was coaching basketball. These kids absolutely loved basketball, mm -hmm. boys and girls, and they wanted to start a team. We come to our first practice, and uh, we didn't have any sneakers. We didn't have a team basketball. Sure. Um, so we started fundraising, and uh, in the meantime, we were working hard. Kids would pass up their bus ride home from school to play basketball barefoot for two hours, only to wow. then walk home 10 miles back to their village. Yeah. And yeah. they were doing it just from pure love of the game, and that was really inspiring for me. Yeah. And uh, music quickly followed after as something that kids loved, another way to have an outlet in a world that has all kinds of struggles, um, sure. opportunities to have discipline and inspiration and to have personal accomplishment that you can take hold of and teamwork and all of that yeah. and uh, it was an inspiring experience so we started fundraising we were able to raise mm -hmm. the resources we needed and now we're operating in Micronesia and in Rwanda at a, an orphanage in, in Rwanda and uh, we're really proud of the work we're doing. Uh, Micronesia uh, is that part of uh, US territories? It uh, has an interesting uh, compact with US territories. It, it is now an independent country and has been for many years, um, but there's a pretty strong alliance between American the United influence. States yeah, yeah. and Federated States. Uh, tell us about these apps that you're, you're putting together. Um, so the apps are actually not me, but we have a fundraiser coming up. Okay. Um, yeah, in two weeks we have the New York City uh, fundraiser for Rwanda. Um, it is a event for adults to come have a, a good time at a bar in New York City on a Saturday night from 10 to 12. Um, we're going to show a little video that uh, we're really proud of. And the event was actually uh, co-sponsored by an organization called Eventpire. Um, luckily, we've been able, we've been very fortunate to connect with lots of people who are willing to lend a hand and help out in different ways. Uh -huh. Filmmakers and artists and event planners and donors and board members um, who just believe in, believe in what we're doing, believe mm -hmm. that music and sports actually can uh, add joy to a kid's life and help provide an outlet um, when maybe others aren't so readily available. That's wonderful. And uh, it, how, do you, how do you feel working on something like this, helping others? I, I, feel, I feel great. I think uh, I'm, I'm more selfish than I come off. I'm getting more out of this than anybody else. And uh, it's been amazing. I mean, I keep in touch with the, the students that I got to see firsthand that, you know, their lives are just a, a little bit happier um, from this. You know, we're not providing medicine or, or food. We're, we're providing yeah. an opportunity for, that for is kids medicine, to be. That is medicine, Yeah, if medicine really for the mind it, yeah, and for yeah. the soul. So I believe in that. Um, you know, for me, even when I'm having a bad day, I, I go to the park and shoot around, or I pick up yeah. my guitar and play some music, and the, the effect it has on me is uh, can't really be described adequately in words. And if I can do that for even just one other kid, yeah. um, or if people can help me do that and help our organization do that for just one, one boy or one girl in another country, then for that one boy or girl, maybe their, their whole life can be How changed How can people or, or organizations help you with that? So there's a bunch of ways to help out. Um, at the most basic level, we just want people to be part of our 
family, part of our community, come on social media, talk to us, let us know what you want to see, mm -hmm. uh, you know, tell us how we can help you. Um, if you're interested in donating sneakers or, or an instrument, you can go on our website and they'll say, you want to donate sneakers? That's $30. Or a guitar mm -hmm. is $100 or um, any of that. And even more for our long-term vision, we're trying to um, get more fundraising going on on a, kid, on a student level um, in the States and, and elsewhere. We want to mm -hmm. help make this be an opportunity for kids to learn about the nonprofit world, learn about becoming a global citizen at a young age and uh, help us fundraise in that so way. So they could donate the, the item or the cash? Yeah, I mean, as of so now, if it's, if it's it, sneakers, it's $100? Um, for sneakers, it's uh, just thirty dollars. Yeah, and uh, so right now it's 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 easier to donate the cash because we buy in bulk for a school or for Got a it. shelter. Um, we're still working out the kinks of using uh, used equipment and get a whole and container all of that. set. Buy in bulk and get a whole container. Yeah, yeah, but we're really looking for schools, students that are interested in becoming mm -hmm. global citizens that want to help do fundraising, want to become involved, and all they need to do is shoot me an email. We have some some great students already doing some fundraising at Great Neck North High School in, uh, in Long Island and uh, Oceanside High School and, and other places. And we're just trying to start a, you know, a community of people who are all on the same page. Let's start that community. There's a camera right there. <laughs> yep. Talk to that camera, tell them you need some help. If oh. your school wants to start something, what do, they, what do they have to do? All right, breaking the fourth wall here. If, if your school wants to help out, just come out on, on social media, send, send us an email. Um, Tell us that your school wants to get involved. We're looking for sports teams, music clubs, other kinds of clubs. If you're a student that wants to help change the world, wants to help start learning how to become a global citizen, learn about the world, and you feel strongly about helping other people and kids mm -hmm. become happier, that's all it takes to become part of our ISMP family, and we'd be really lucky to have you. You like that, Helen? There's that camera right there. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Great work. Thank you so right, much. What website or email address uh, do you uh, have to go to? It's, a, it's, it's all long, so it's International Sports and Music Project. International Sports and Music Project dot org. Yep. Just Google International Sports and Music Project. You'll, you'll find us somewhere. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Really oh. appreciate it. Give them a big hand, everybody. Go like this. <laughs> we applaud Thank you. Thank you. We've got to take a quick break right here, but stay tuned. We'll be right back with more Open Next. <laughs> Hello, good people of the Bronx and beyond. Welcome to A Life in Art. Good morning. I had the opportunity to join the students of uh, Pulse High School in the Bronx as they graduated and they're on. They have a new beginning. They're getting ready to do their thing. Let's take a look. 2016 is a very exciting year for Bronx Sites as another class takes an important step towards their future. Providing urban learners success in education high school said goodbye to its 10th graduating class at the Botanical Gardens on its 10th year anniversary. Dr. Carol Wiggins, founding principal of the school, says she is honored and humbled to be the principal of these students. It is absolutely the most fabulous feeling because Pulse High School is a second chance high school. So a lot of these, all of these young people have been told that they would never get a high school diploma. And so this day is so bittersweet and so sweet that these young people are not only getting a high school diploma, it's bittersweet because they all leave me. She just stands behind the kids every step of the way. She grabs them by the hand. She says, look, this is what we're going to do. She looks them in the eyes, makes sure they're looking her in the eyes. Say, are you going to do this? If you're going to do this, let's go. I'm going to take you all the way to it and through it. All right. So she stands behind them every step of the way. She gives them everything, all the tools that they need. And the parents are involved in this thing. It's a, it's a family affair. A lot of the adults and the family members need to help out, push them to strive for this goal. Without this goal, we have nothing. Education is the element of life. Paul's High School is one of four Diploma Plus schools with the mission to improve and strengthen students' learning through a student-centered curriculum. With this curriculum, students get to learn these core subjects using real-life problems and projects leading them to this big day. I'm, I'm honored to graduate because I didn't only do this. I did this for my grandma that passed away a long time ago. And I'm honored to, for me and all my peers to be together to graduate on this day. I'm happy I'm done because 
one, I'm pregnant, so hip hip hooray, I'm done. <laughs> Thank you. And you know, I'm gonna miss everybody, but it's time for me to go. It's it's about that time. It's just I feel relieved. It's it's really it was stressful, it's hard, but we overcome it. It's just it's it's a real nice feeling. Although Taylor is relieved, she says getting to the finish line was not that easy. It was a time I was I was not this, so I had to just get up and do it. Nobody else gonna do it but yourself, so that's it, just work hard. Hard work pays off, and with their high school experience over, it is evident that programs like Pulse contribute to the improvement and success of Bronx students. This is Nancy Asiyama, BronxNet. Welcome back, everybody. How you doing? I'm your host, Dr. Bob Lee, and uh, our next guest is a Bronx parent, education advocate, and an app creator. Yes, indeed, she creates apps. I'm down with APP, yeah, you know me. She joins us today to share more about her APP, her app, <laughs> and to learn more, or more to learn, we welcome A.K. Dow. We welcome you to the show. Good morning, thank you're you for having me. You're down with APP, yeah, you know me. <laughs> uh, so everybody's getting, everything is an app. You know, everything you want to get into is an app. I need an app for this, an app for that. And you felt the, there was a need in the community for an app, and you came up with what? So I initially did not come up with an app. That was not initially what happened. That's not what happened. So I, um, I have an online store that- In the beginning. That's the beginning, right? So <laughs> the story, I have an online store and I was talking to my um, developer and I was telling him my twins that are seven now, at the time were five and a half. I said, oh my goodness, these kids have all these papers everywhere with spelling words and sight words oh, and yeah. word wall words and foundation it was words. driving you crazy. Yes, I didn't realize that yeah. there were so many different words that kids needed to learn. Yeah. And I was explaining to him, I need some place to put these words. And then I want my kids to be able to practice these words at the same time. So he said, well, download one of those apps. You know, the parents, a lot of parents are yes. downloading those learning apps. So I went online like everyone else and I went to the app store and I'm looking for an app that can take all of the words that I get from school and put them into the app. Sure. And there were none. Nothing. Huh? No. So um, I went back and I'm like, you know, there is no word. There's no app that can do what I needed to do. And he said, well, make one. Mm. And I was that's like, what? So and that's how that that that's how it began. I actually I started to um, research different apps that were out there and take different parts of things that I like from certain apps oh, okay. and then decide on what would make it work for me as a parent because I was in need for a tool to help me help mm -hmm. my two kids that have that they, they have different learning challenges, but they needed to learn these spelling words and their sight words. Um, and that's how I came up with the app. And that's now where we are right now. How does it work? So and what it, happens I mean, is... Are the kids thriving? It, the yeah, and so it, it actually did work. My kids uh -huh. actually started practicing their spelling words and learning these foundation words because it was on an app. It was in technology, something that all the kids now are familiar with. Yes. It, it, it's amazing to see my kids that weren't able to read yeah. actually know these words because, like everything else, they needed repetition, but it wasn't just boring repetition it's fun repetition and it's what they know it's the it's the finger thing yes it's and the screen everybody's thing doing it. yes the thumbs the fingers exactly so instead of having papers and apps and i mean all kinds of things class work all over the place mm -hmm. you take it and you put it like this all in one app yes and now it's at the tip of your fingers yes so it's not they don't even realize they're learning because they're actually playing a game mm-hmm and you see kids walking around, some of them have the big mm -hmm. iPads, so they're very good at it too. No, they are, they're perfect. It's, it's amazing that I was able to use technology to trick my kids into learning. <laughs> yeah. So we continue to use the technology, not only for your kids, so now you want to expose this or, or create the awareness that this app is available, available for people in our community. Yes, so what we did was, um, like I said, initially made it for my own need, mm -hmm. um, but then we decided that we should introduce it to everybody. Maybe I'm not the only mom out there who says I'm tired of all these papers and flashcards and spelling word list. Maybe there's a, a thousand other parents that feel yeah. the same way. So we put the app, it's actually on Apple, mm -hmm. the Apple market, and it's currently, we just recently got it on the Android market. And they just go and they download it. I mean, it could be downloaded on your phone, it could be downloaded on your iPad. It does have to be either on an Android or, um, or an Apple product. 
other than that, they can Tell use parents that. how this will help their youngsters. So if you're a parent that was like me, the main <laughs> problem that I was having is I have all these words that were coming in on a weekly basis. Mm -hmm. They get a big, what do they send you? They send you home with a sheet of paper. I have twins, so I got two sheets of paper. <laughs> um, and they come home with a spelling word list, anywhere between five to ten words. Yes. And what they do is we take the words and we enter them into the app. So if on Monday the kids come home with a spelling word list, we're going to put those words into the app. And then by so Friday... you just take a picture of the words and it goes straight No, you're going to actually physically put every single word in. And okay. you're going to make sure that you read the words and spell them carefully because once they're in, they're locked in. They're locked you in. can't take them out. So then when the second week comes and you got that second sheet of words, those words are now going to be put into the app. But last week's words won't be forgotten because right. they're locked into the app. Mm -hmm. So we have been able to let the kids compile their spelling word list. So by the end of the school year, they haven't forgotten the, f the words that they learned in the beginning of the school year because they're still in that app that they're playing games yeah, with. Yeah. So it helps them to learn how to spell. It helps them to recognize the words. When they have their exams, they can get 100 because they've been working with those words. Yes. And it helps to increase their vocabulary. Exactly. Uh, there's just a few things that I can think of that, that, w that will help. And we also say that they're good for kids, um, ESL students mm -hmm, sure. that are learning new words. Um, they're, kids for, they're good for children that maybe are struggling with um, some mm -hmm. particular learning challenges and they need more repetition because my kids are those particular kids. We need repetition, repetition, repetition. I cannot let my kids not practice the words from last week because mm -hmm. then they'll they won't remember them. So they need to see them all the time. Mm -hmm. You need to be able to flash on them every once in a while to make them realize, wait, oh, I can't forget about that word because yeah. I keep seeing it in the game that I'm playing. I remember it because sure. I saw it. That's what we tell our clients who buy airtime on WBLS. Oh, yeah. You need repetition. If you, put, <laughs> you play that commercial once, nobody will remember it. No, they but won't. Once and twice and three, and you keep hearing it and you're repetitious about it and people will remember it and they'll respond. Yes, and that's the, the way our mind works. Airtime. So yes, that's the way it works. It does, it does. So you're happy about it? I'm, I'm so it's excited. I'm excited that I actually thought of something that was going to help me, and now it, it can help other, other parents. And we actually, when we were talking about it, it, it especially here in the Bronx, it's good for parents that, um, that are on the go. Mm -hmm. and they want their kids. We always, we want to hand our kids something sure. to hush them up or to calm them down, but now you can actually hand them something and they're yeah. learning those same things that they have to learn in and school. they already have the iPad and tablet and they're doing all those, what's that <laughs> construction game that they're doing? Everybody uh, does, yes. Yeah, what's that thing that they do, that construction game? Uh, mine, Minecraft. Minecraft. My kids know it better than I do, yeah, trust you know, me. So here, all right, you can't do the Minecraft right now. Let's do these words. Yes. You know, let's get into the words. All right, where can we go for more information, uh, parents who want to get involved in this and, um, and get that app to help their student? Well, right now you can actually go on to the Apple Store and mm -hmm. you can go on to the Android Market and you can just put in more to the number two, learn. Uh -huh. And there you'll be able to, it'll pop right up and they can just download the app. Um, or go to moretolearn.com? They can go to moretolearn.org. Okay. where we're actually starting to, so because I needed a need, we're, I'm starting, I wrote a, a whole bunch of children's books. Mm -hmm. And so there's different um, things that we're looking into now to start to bring in other learning tools for kids mm -hmm. that worked for the app, so we're going to apply it to reading now. Fantastic. Yes. Give Melina a big round of applause, everybody. <laughs> A.K. Dow in the house. Co-founder. Thank you. All to learn. A.K. <laughs> Um, we got to take a quick break right here, Lena, and uh, we'll come right back. We'll have uh, an energetic workout to keep you moving. You want to participate? If I you have your throw sneakers my sneakers on, on. You, you yes. Got your sneakers over there in yes. the bag? <laughs> All right, get ready. We'll be back with more next. Thank you. If you want to stay in the know about the latest happenings in Espanol, check out Dialogo Abierto, BronxNet's own Spanish show, Wednesday, 6.30 p.m. on Channel 67. The latest in news, arts, culture, politics, and what's going on in your neighborhood. Dialogo Abierto, the best way to stay connected in Spanish. See you there. Te esperamos.
There's a shelter pet who wants to meet you. Meet one today. Visit the shelterpetproject.org. Adopt. and best friends. I love my sister. My heart, my heart doesn't, doesn't see race. race. Love, love is love. Our family is no less than any other family. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome back. Our next guest is a trainer. He goes by the name of Tracy Knott. He joins us today for a year long fitness. It tells you how to do it. You can how you can work out all year long, and keep you know just do different things to keep you in shape. Right. And right. Um, he's here. He comes about uh, maybe once or twice, or maybe five. I think you come about five times a year, right? I maybe come more. Once a month. You come once a month. You know what? I didn't even notice. Ah, it's <laughs> cold, but it's okay. <laughs> I did. Give Tracy not another big round of applause, everybody. <laughs> I don't know. I see you every now and I then. Know. I see you. You're doing your thing. And That's you have right. uh, some new guests with you? Well, I have, yeah, I have a few new guests. I have a re uh, returning guest, like my buddy Steve. I here, remember you know? Steve. You yeah. don't mind me blowing up. Steve is 63 years old. He's been rocking with me. This guy Looking has good, Steve. Super, Give Steve a big yeah. hand. Yeah. Super duper energy. I mean, uh -huh. uh, he's one of many that I've changed where I tell people all the time is up in here, then your heart and everything else follows. Yeah, yeah. We have Ida here. She's Young at heart. not really a newcomer, but uh, she's Ida, a newcomer coming here. You got to jump. Ready? High five. <laughs> <laughs> and you have Edgar. Edgar's been on. Edgar! Yeah, yeah. Give so. them both a big round of applause. <laughs> All right, so what are we going to do today? Well, what we're going to do today, well, first things, let me just talk about something. I just made okay, 50 years old on July 5th. Well, happy That's birthday a big, thank to you. Thank you, you. Thank you, thank you. Happy you. birthday to you and many more. That's, That's the right. abbreviated edition. That's right. That's sure. right. So, I, I mean, I'm a good example. I tell people all the time, your health is very, very important. Mm -hmm. I have a lot of people my age and even younger that I've known, they're breaking down. I mean, we yeah. take our health for granted so much. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, you don't want to be at that stage where you're saying, damn, I should have you know, taking care of myself as far as eating, and you just have to do something each and every day for 15 minutes. 15 minutes is more than enough. I have a lot of people that I train, they think that it's about target training. You have a lot of the guys, they just want to work on the arms. Yeah. And I'm like, dude, you know, we got to get on that heart first, and then everything else will follow. Big arms and skinny Yeah, legs. yeah, you got to yeah, just yeah. keep it well balanced, and you have a healthy life. I mean, I don't know anybody that doesn't want to look and feel good, you know, right. so. And but um, this is a workout also, not only for the abs and, and for the cardio, but to relieve stress because oh, of, yeah. there's yeah. a lot of things that are burdening. Listen, you. listen, we have a lot of Burden stuff going on, our man. Yes. It's, we're, we're at a hot point right now with a lot of stuff that's going yeah. on. People are very emotional. People are traumatized. Yes, right now. man. Yes. And, and you know, it's sad, but it's part of life. You got to work on your spiritual and your mental mm -hmm. aspect and just try so to stay strong. So what can you strong, do with man? this emotional overload that we're, we are experiencing? Well, I do. Hey. If I didn't work out every day, I would be one crazy dude. I mean, you wouldn't believe how it helps you. You know what I mean? It, it's more of a challenge. Like when we're in school, I mean, you, if you don't understand when you're in school, I mean, yes, you're learning, but they're teaching you how to adjust to things, too. Yeah. Like you were in school and the teacher would say, okay, we're going to have a test tomorrow. You adjust to that. I mean, and that's what it is in life, too. You know, you just have to yeah. adjust and you become stronger. You know how to take on challenges, yeah. you know? But it's tough if you're close to somebody who's been, like, oh, gunned man, down. Yeah. Oh, man, yeah. You yeah. have somebody. Yes, yes. My best friend I've been friends with for five years, since I was five years old, excuse me. He just lost his son um, on the 30th, right, in, right here in the Bronx, right in the park. Yeah. Uh, he was uh, taking his invitation. He was about to graduate the next week to his friend, and um, just so happens a kid just wanted to come up and shoot, the, shoot up the park, and uh -huh. he was the only one hit, 24 years old, you know, Ryan Ginyard, you know, sad, sad, sad time. All I could do is say, be there for my friend yeah. and, you know, his family, but, um, you I'm know, it's one of- I'm sorry to hit it, my condolences yeah, to yeah, you. Yeah, 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 thank family. you. But the uh, thing, what I will say is that it makes you think about, like I said before, 
you know, things like that, it's going gonna, it's gonna to happen. You know what I mean? But when you can control something like your health, mm -hmm. um, step the game up. So really what can you do? Up. What are you going to do right now? For this what we're going to do? We're going to do emotional overload that everybody's keep it going, baby. I'm just jump around. I don't care what you do. You have to jump around, get that heart pumping. You burn those calories and then you burn fat. And you like I said, you start to feel good. What happens is I work on the core area. The core area consists of the lower back, mm -hmm. the glutes and the abs. That's the strongest part of your body. Everything else will follow. Let's do it. Let's Tracy Knott, ladies and gentlemen, give him another big round of applause. Yeah. What I was saying before about the core area, we'll go down in here, go down, you come up, and you jump up. After that, we'll do mountain climbers. What if you give you a beat for the No, I don't need a beat for that. We're going to make it work. And we'll come up with the one, two, three. So, guys, are we ready? Let's hit our burpees. Come on. Boom. Hit it. And then we come down and hit the mountain climbers. Let's go. Let's get up, people. Hit the threes. One, two, here. One, two, here. One, two, here. One, two. Back to the mountain climbers. Let's go. Back up with the threes. Let's go. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Good job. Good job. Get your mats. Get your mats. Get your mats. Next thing we're going to do, I'm going to show you how I incorporate little props, I bring things in to show you how you won't get bored with your workout. So guys, lie down on your backs. Yep. Put the tires on your chest. We're gonna work our whole bodies on this. First things first, I'll have Edgar demonstrate. We're gonna do a quick press with the tire. Next, we'll come up, shoot it above your head, and come up, working the abs. Last, we'll work, sorry, next, we'll work our shoulders. Come up, press, back down. Tight scissors while holding up the tire, side to side. Tuck the knees under and kick out. Straight legs up to the tire. So now, let's start it, guys. Press it off your chest, let's go. Keep those elbows wide, keep breathing. Quickly, quickly, let's go. Sit up and press it above your head. Let's go. Keep it going. Keep it going. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Stay with that shoulder press. Let's go. Press. Elbows out. Let's go. Quickly. Lie down. Tight scissors. Let's go. Keep that tire up. Let's go. Scissors side to side. Let's get it. Tuck those knees under and kick out. Straight legs up to the tire. One more round, press it off your chest, let's go. Sit up and press it above your head. Keep it going, keep it going, keep it going. Stay up and shoulder press, let's go. Keep pressing, keep pressing, let's go. Quickly, quickly, lie down tight scissors. To the side to side. Tuck those knees under and kick out. Straight legs up to the tire. Good job. Stand it up, guys. Good job. Good job. So it's so weird, like I was saying earlier, how you have to adjust in life. This didn't go as planned with my music, but you make that adjustment and make it work. You don't cry about it, make it happen. Look up. Good job. Good job. Good job. I'm working out now, see? <laughs> <laughs> but give them a big round of applause. Tracy Knott and the crew. And we're going to graduate to the truck tires next, right? Oh, yes, the, yes, the, yes. Those are hell And that's when you, you work out with me, like, the first time. I'll, I'll, I'll do it. I'll do okay. it. Okay. Right. I got You all got right. my word, all right? Okay. I, all I, right. I, I can get right. back. I'm back in business now. Not a problem. Know? Yeah, okay. Good, good, good. That sounds good. Tracy Knott, one Thank more time. You. Yes, indeed. All right. Uh, how you doing, everybody? If you just tuned in, welcome. Yeah. I'm the Dr. Bob Lee. You saw a workout with Tracy <laughs> Knott. Um, I think we can go to, let's take a break right here, and we'll come back uh, with a little more and more, and then we'll wrap it up, right? Right after this.
You gotta learn your body, pace yourself, and have fun. So let's go have fun. Let's go do it. The big thing about shoulders, your shoulders is a three-tier muscle. You have your front delt, you have your rear delt, and you have your mid delt. So when you're working out your shoulders properly, you have to do three different exercises. It's wonderful being able to compete with a lot of these young guys from all over the world. It's important to stay in shape. How you doing? Good. Welcome back, everybody. We're on the line with uh, Assemblyman Michael Blake from the 79th uh, District. Uh, and we wanted to talk to him on um, some of the things, the tragedies that are happening in our community. Get his thoughts, let him weigh in. You know, he's joining us today to, take his, uh, to hear his take on these events and the need to end the violence. Uh, good morning, Assemblyman. Good morning, Brother Lee. Always good to connect with you. I wish it was under better circumstances, but uh, at least we're here. Yes. Tell us, give us some of your thoughts on what's happening. You know, uh, people are acting up all over the place. Uh, there's been shootings everywhere, and people are upset. Look, I think first and foremost, the, uh, our, our thoughts and prayers and, and reflections go out to the families, um, all the families, uh, the, the Sterling family, the, the Castile family, uh, the, the small family out in Brooklyn uh, and the family of the five that lost their lives in Dallas. Uh, lives should never be lost under any circumstance. Uh, but we, we have to make sure that we are not losing sight of what is getting here, us here to this point, uh, where in the black community it is consistently felt, especially amongst black men right now, um, you know, what, what to do? What are you to do when you are doing absolutely nothing wrong uh, and you're still losing your life? Uh, and on the flip side, that does not make it an excuse and a, and a reason uh, to be taking life. I think what we have to make sure is that we, one, acknowledge what's happening, that 99% of officers are probably doing the right thing, 99% of citizens are doing the right thing, but we're saying on both sides that when someone does wrong, that they should be prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law uh, in order to provide justice. And let's make sure we're addressing the conditions on the ground first and foremost. Make sure that there's better schools, better jobs, better communities, uh, so that people are not feeling lost in the first place, and then having real, true criminal justice reform, so we also provide that support as well. Yes. Uh, Assemblyman, do we need new legislation? What, what should we do? 100%. You know, we, we have an executive action um, right now that the, the governor put into place so that the attorney general will serve as a special prosecutor uh, when this occurs. However, we need that to be statutory. We need that to become the law. Uh, we need our Senate Republican colleagues in New York State Senate to work with us to get that done. Uh, we need to make sure there's more transparency around grand jury reform. Uh, we need to make sure that we are working and pushing congressional Republicans to do the right thing so that if someone is on a no-fly list that they also cannot get a, a, a weapon. Uh, a semi-automatic doesn't make any sense that that's in the hands of someone. You know, we need to make sure um, that there is uh, immediacy that happens that if someone takes these actions that they, they are put on temporary leave until the, the facts are examined. Yeah. So, yes, we have legislation that needs to occur. Uh, we, and we need to take action in the community conversations as well. Yes. Uh, we, we are going to be hosting uh, community conversations. We're working with the New Leaders Council, uh, which is a national organization around this. Um, we're going to be working with the, uh, uh, the American State Legislators for Gun Violence Prevention as well mm -hmm. uh, and then get ready for a community conversation we'll probably be doing later on this Saturday uh, for people to find out how they can get involved uh, and what we're doing to create action. There has to be action and things must turn around. Yes. Is there any way we can create a better harmony between the community and the police department? Well, I think, you know, we, we first, when we recognize that there are officers that have been doing great work in the community um, to build those relationships. You look at, uh, you know, Calazzo and Tejado and, and Angel, uh, uh, you know, Rosari, you know, you know, whether it be, you know, C.O. Ryan or Sullivan, O'Sullivan, you know, we know there are ones that have been engaging uh, incredibly well in our community. Uh, but what we have to do is find the ways concretely. What are we doing to make sure that there's more training around cultural sensitivity and, and, and racial r relations? What are we doing that there's more hiring of black and brown officers to be a part of the force so they can have that kind of engagement? And Assemblyman, we applaud you for all the wonderful work that you're doing in the community. We always see you out there with your sleeves rolled up, doing some wonderful things, making appearances here and there. And I get all of your emails, so I know everything that you're doing, all the beautiful uh, work that, that you've done. We, we thank you for your service. Uh, finally, do you have a message that you would like to send to both our community and uh, our police department? 
Well, I think the first message we need to send right now uh, is that people are hurting. Uh, people are, are really hurting, and, and for very legitimate reasons. I, I've been very direct in saying, you know, as, as a black man, it's, it's hard for me uh, to process what's happening, and it's hard to have uh, these, these images out there. It is very difficult to see a uh, recent video that came out in Brooklyn, which refuted what was being said by the, the officials and the officers there uh, in terms of what happened. Uh, and so first is you know, we have to acknowledge the pain and acknowledge that the pain has been building up for not just a year and a few years, but for decades. Uh, and that we have to create better conditions on the ground for people to have jobs and educational opportunities. But then we have to also realize that when wrongs happen, uh, that it, it has to be prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law. The only way people will feel that something changes is if justice has action and that we have laws that actually changes with that. Uh, but then we have to build it together. Um, so whether it's the community and the, uh, and the police department, uh, we have to find a way to come together to figure out, you know what, enough is enough on both sides. We have to make sure that people are uniting as one. Uh, the only way we're going to be able to make kind of true progress is by understanding that. Uh, we recognize that most people are doing the right thing, but for those that are not, uh, this is our time to say, you know, enough is enough and let's move on uh, together. Uh, there's enough pain, there's enough heart, uh, heartache that is out there, uh, but, but I am convinced um, all the things that have happened in our history have prepared us to be able to uh, turn things around in a positive direction. Uh, that, that's why we're going to take a very active move for anyone that wants to join us, community, police officers, elected officials, whomever, uh, as we're engaging with the New Leaders Council, as we're engaging with American State Legislators for Gun Violence Prevention, as we're engaging with My Brother's Keeper Alliance, uh, call our office, 718-538-3829, 718-538-3829, or follow us on Twitter, MR Mike Blake, on Facebook, to find out about the upcoming events and activations we're going to be doing throughout the weekend and beyond uh, to keep this momentum going. We are not going to stop until we bring our community together. Assemblyman, thank you so much. We, we, we praise you and thank you and applaud you for the work that you're doing in our community. God, God bless you, Dr. Lee. You know, this, this is our time to come together. And, and to the families that have lost someone, again, our thoughts and prayers continue to be with you. All right. Assemblyman Michael Blake from the 79th District. That about does it for me. I would like to thank all of our guests for joining us and you. Uh, our viewer for tuning in and checking it all out. If you missed any part of today's show, where well, you can tune into the Recablecast of Open at 5 and 10 p.m. or watch anytime on the web at bronxnet.org or catch an all-new episode Wednesday at 10 a.m. with our host, Darren Jaime. For all of us here at Bronxnet, thank you. Have a great and enjoyable day. And always remember this, what you are is God's gift to you and what you make of yourself is your gift to God. So choose your choice and let your choice control the chooser. I'm the Dr. Bob Lee. I'll catch you tonight right, I'll catch you tonight right after the quiet storm with my man Lenny Green. Peace.